Since the late 1800s, explorers have been searching the African continent for the mysterious missing link. In the late 19th century into the 20th century, English, German, French, and Belgian explorers heard numerous reports of sightings of tiny ape men living in the jungles of eastern Congo, Kenya, and Tanzania. French explorers, such as the famed zoologist Bernard Hovelmans, were the first to chronicle sightings of the African ape men. Raymond Dart and Philip Tobias of the University of with Waterswan, along with medical doctor Robert Broom, continued the hunt for the missing link in South Africa into the 1960s. Research associate at with Waterswan, Krista Kuljian, from Wit News 2019. Dart also led the first expedition of researchers from Witz to the Kalahari Desert in 1936 because he was interested in Bushman anatomy. Continuing, scientists in South Africa continued to work with the concept of race typology well into the 1960s. Philip Tobias, the successor to Dart as head of the Department of Anatomy at WITS, continued to embrace the existence of racial types. Geneticists race defined archaic hominid DNA admixture in modern humans. University of Wisconsin evolutionary science professor John Hawkes explained the way latent genetic lineages can occur in modern populations in a paper published in 2008, A Genetic Legacy from Archaic Homo. Continuing, adaptive alleles may have introgressed from archaic populations into modern humans. When an introgressed archaic allele has a selective advantage Interbreeding can lead to its spread or fixation in later human populations. Continuing, several genetic loci are candidates for such introgression, including microcephaline, a gene influencing brain development, which may suggest that the evolution of human cognition depended in part on the genetic legacy of archaic groups. In 2009-10-11, the genetics world was experiencing a frenzy of activity with research into archaic hominin DNA. Svante Pabo and his team at the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig, Germany, had just confirmed the presence of Neanderthal DNA in the Eurasian genome. A year later, another astounding discovery. Johannes Krauss, working in the Svante Pabo lab, noticed a slice of a finger bone given to them from a Russian archaeology team did not match the Homo sapien or Neanderthal genomes. It was a new species, Denisovans. In Arizona, in the western United States, another genetics team was working on similar research. Dr. Michael Hammer is a geneticist at the University of Arizona. Hammer et al. were focused on discovering archaic admixture in Africans. Genetic evidence for archaic admixture in Africa, PNAS 2011. A long debated question concerns the fate of archaic forms of the genus Homo. Did they go extinct without interbreeding with anatomically modern humans? Continuing, are there genes present in contemporary populations? Anatomically modern humans originated in Africa and dispersed to all inhabited parts of the world. What is not known is, did archaic hominins make a genetic contribution to modern humans? Continuing, our findings suggest that Central Africa may have been the homeland of a now extinct archaic form that hybridized with modern humans. Atlantic Magazine 2011, a new paper published by Michael Hammer, new evidence that Homo sapiens had sex with several species of our ancestors across the African continent, interbred with Homo erectus, Homo habilis, and possibly others. Continuing, Hammer says that despite earlier skepticism about interbreeding between human species, 
Our DNA shows otherwise. Quote, we think there were probably thousands of interbreeding events. It happened relatively extensively and regularly. Unquote. Dr. Hammer speculated in Pacific Standard Magazine in 2017, perhaps the African version of Homo erectus. Quote, we may use genetics here as a predictor of what the paleontologist might find, end quote, Hammer says. Continuing, Dr. Hammer's research suggests that humans and earlier hominids, Homo erectus mated, a conclusion that would alter out-of-Africa theory. Arizona.edu on the PBS series First Peoples. He approached the mystery by looking for genetic fossils, signatures of populations living in Africa today. Hammer's group is one of the few in the field that have been able to trace extensive mixing among early humans. Tragedy struck the Hammer family. Their daughter, Shay, died at age 15 from a rare form of epilepsy, SCN8A. Dr. Hammer lost interest in pursuing the ghost species DNA for Africans. He threw himself into finding a cure for rare genetic diseases. From KOLD TV Tucson, 2019. Shay's legacy lives on through new research. Around the same time, UPenn geneticist Sarah Tishkoff had reached similar conclusions from AAAS 2009, The Genetic Structure and History of Africans and African Americans. Dr. Tishkoff trekked across Africa collecting whole genome sequences of 180 individuals from 12 indigenous African populations. Tishkoff et al. found evidence of multiple introgression events from ghost archaic populations within Africa admixture. Another team emerged in the late 2010s seeking the African DNA admixture. The University of California team was led by superstar genetics duo Sankararaman and Dervasula. They released their data in early 2020. They found up to 19% of the African genome comes from a mysterious archaic hominid. From the BBC, February 2020, a mysterious ghost population of now extinct ancient human-like creatures may have interbred with early humans in Africa. Continuing, researchers suggest DNA from this group makes up between 2 to 19% of African genetic ancestry and that the interbreeding occurred about 43,000 years ago. Sankararaman from his UCSD lecture 2020, quote, there was integration into the African population from a super archaic population that split off prior to the split between Neanderthals and modern humans 600,000 years ago. Neither Neanderthal or Denisovan. Continuing, further, we estimate a fairly substantial contribution of this archaic ghost lineage of about 11%. What is this population? We don't know. End quote. In March 2023, two medical researchers from Africa released a study that adds a gigantic piece to the puzzle of archaic hominid DNA admixture in modern Africans. Dr. Ambroise Wankam is the director of the Department of Genetic Medicine at John Hopkins University in Maryland. After an MD training from Biomedical Sciences, 
He completed his PhD in human genetics at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Dr. Adebowale Adeyemo qualified in medicine at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. After a residency in pediatrics and genetics, he became a faculty member and consultant pediatrician geneticist at the University College Hospital, Ibadan, Nigeria. Their paper was published at Cell.com on March 8, 2023, leveraging our common African origins to understand human evolution and health. Wankum and Adeyemo studied 12 different indigenous populations from varying regions of Africa. Their aim was to better understand diseases that affect Afro-ethnics living in the West, such as sickle cell. From their paper, Africa contains more genetic diversity than any other continent and millions of uncaptured variants accumulated over 300,000 years of modern humans' evolutionary history. A detailed study of African genomic variation is a scientific imperative. Continuing, all modern humans derive approximately 5 to 15 percent of their ancestry from a lineage that may have diverged as long as one to three million years ago with multiple introgression events. Continuing, demographic history of African populations consists of multiple ancient introgressions within African genomes, indicating at least two introgression events from archaic humans that never move out of Africa. The chart that accompanies the study confirms multiple sexual introgressions of archaics with modern Africans continuing after waves of Homo sapiens had already left for Eurasia. The three introgressions represented by the blue line occurred 800,000 years ago, 200,000 years ago, and 60 to 80,000 years ago. Homo erectus would seem to be the most likely hominid to introgress at all three points. Dates for Homo erectus or gaster are from 1.9 million years ago to 70,000 years ago in Africa. Michael Hammer had found strikingly similar results in 2011. From Dr. Hammer's paper, interestingly, the Mbute Eastern Pygmies represent the only population in our survey that carries the introgressive variant at all three candidate loci. Welcome Adeyemo continue. Ancestors of Southern African San and Central African rainforest hunter-gatherers diverged from other populations 200,000 years ago. Gene flow between Eastern and Southern Khoisan hunter-gatherer populations lasting until 12,000 years ago. Continuing, these results suggest the possibility that the Khoisan, Hadza, Sandawe, and Pygmy populations are remnants of a historically more widespread proto khoisan pygmy population of hunter-gatherers. The findings of the African team of Wankam and Adeyemo mirror those of Sankararaman and Dervasula from 2020. Both genetics teams suggest at least 10% archaic admixture in the African genome. The evidence is now clear. Multiple genetics teams from distinguished universities have all reached the same conclusion. Sub-Saharan Africans are hybrid Homo sapiens admixed with archaic hominins from the middle to upper Pleistocene. But is the modern African admixture with one species or a variety of archaic hominins? Homo naledi species X? Professor Lee Berger is a protege of Philip Tobias. He was a PhD student under Professor Tobias. 
He also co-authored numerous papers with Tobias in the 1990s. Dr. Berger now holds the distinguished Philip Tobias Chair at University of Witwatersrand in South Africa. Since the 1990s, Berger has honored his former boss, Philip Tobias, by carrying on his search for the missing link. Now he has hinted in numerous lectures and interviews that they have the home on the lady DNA. Berger made a curious comment on the October 20th, 2022 podcast of World of Paleoanthropology, guest hosted by Georgina of the UK. Quote, Now, lady, if it's species X, for example, you know the missing species in the DNA of some African humans. I think there's a real chance of it, by the way. End quote. Dr. Berger. But rather than just homo naledi, in all likelihood, Africans are admixed with multiple species X, an African multi-regional model. This is known as the Pan-African model, a term created by Malta-based archaeologist Eleanor Skieri and popularized by her friend and close colleague Chris Stringer. Under a Pan-African model, Central African pygmies could be direct descendants of Australopithecines, as the French explorers originally proposed. Khoisan from Southwest Africa could be hybrids of Homo naledi or even modern naledi. West Africans appear to have the most mysterious and perplexing of origins. Precise admixture of the Yoruba and Fulani could remain unresolved for some time. Hominid fossil evidence from sites such as Lake Turkana in Kenya and Old Divide Gorge in Tanzania confirm Homo erectus and Ergaster were largely in East Africa. Eastern Africans with their distinct morphological features such as the Nilotics and Maasai pastoralists very likely have predominantly Afro erectus or Homo ergaster admixture. Subspecies support maximum diversity for Homo sapiens. Please help us spread our pro-human variation message by passing this video on to others. And thank you for your continued support for this channel. Remember to leave a comment, hit the like button, and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. Pass this video on to others and hit that like button. Thank you.